live from the British Colonial Hilton Hotel, Dare to be Great, with master motivator, Spence Finlayson. Good evening. This show this evening is about honoring your talents. Honor your talents. I want you to look at someone on your right and left and shake their hand for me and say, honor your talents. Shake somebody's hand. Honor your talents. Honor your talents. Honor your talents. You know, we are all blessed with talents and spiritual gifts. However, these, there are some differences between the talents and the spiritual gifts. And we'll find that out as we go along. A talent is the result of genetics, while a spiritual gift is the result of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, I encourage all of you here and my brothers and sisters in the Caribbean to honor your talents and gifts. Benjamin Franklin said, and I quote, hide not your talents. They were for use. They were for use, not made. What's a sundial in the shade? Oh my, what's a sundial in the shade? Let us continue to use our spiritual gifts to the honor and glory of God and for service to all mankind. Now I'm here to tell you this evening that this region has been blessed with many great singers, great musicians, poets, architects, politicians, educators, doctors, athletes, actors, and of course, motivational speakers, right? Yes. <laughs> Tonight, I believe that Thomas Wolfe was right on target when he said, and I quote, if a man has talent and cannot use it, he has failed. If he has talent, and uses half of it, he has partly failed. And if he has talent and learns somehow to use the whole of it, he has gloriously succeeded and won a satisfaction and a triumph few men will ever know. Don't hide your talents. I believe that the great tragedy in life is not living your dreams and honoring your talents. Because they were special gifts from our creator. Honor your talents. Honor your God-given talents. Sometimes it screams at you very loudly. Sometimes it just whispers to your heart. The calling, honor your calling. This is a calling here for me. You see, I didn't choose this business. This business chose me. I didn't study this. I studied hotel management. But the calling was on my life to do what I'm doing today. Honor your talents. Honor your gifts. The truth of the matter is that we are all skilled in some areas and very limited in other areas. That's the truth. My father was one of the greatest carpenters around. As a matter of fact, he was a finished carpenter. But to this day, I have a difficulty nailing some things. Nailing what? Nailing, nailing some things. That is. I have a difficulty in doing that. But we can all make a great contribution to the betterment of mankind and the betterment of this life. As we talk about in some organizations, you're talking about making good men better. We can all improve ourselves, we can all work on ourselves, but you need to take a personal inventory of your life to find out your strengths and your weaknesses. William Shakespeare said that many of us go to our graves with our music still inside of us because we haven't a chance to release it. And they tell me the richest piece of real estate anywhere in the world is the graveyard because that's where all the great ideas go. And that's right. But in my personal opinion, this is my personal opinion now. The Caribbean, I lived and worked in 22 countries in the region, has been blessed with great leaders in the persons of, talented leaders in the persons of the former prime ministers of some of the countries I'll talk about right now. First of all, we will start off right here, right at home, with the former prime minister, Sir Lyndon Pinling. That's right, give the man some love for me, please. Great leader. Then we go on to Jamaica for Norman and Michael Manley. Give them some love. Great leaders. Then we go down to St. Vincent and the Grenadines for former Prime Minister Sir James Mitchell. Give him some love. Then we're going to take a trip to St. Kitts and Nevis in the person of Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, former Prime Minister. And then you can't forget the nature isle, Dominica, where Dame Eugenia Charles was the head person for many years. Great leader. Give us some love. But I'm here to tell you that, and I'll share this with you, it was a great Cuban, Cuban leader, Jose Marti, 
who had a very famous quote, and this is very profound. I'm going to take my time and share this with you. Uh, he talks about talent. He said, talent is a gift that brings with it an obligation to serve the world and not ourselves. For it is not of our making. And he says, to use for exclusive benefit what is not ours is theft. Oh, man. Culture which makes talents shine is not completely ours either. Nor can we place it solely at our disposal. Rather, it belongs mainly to our country, which gave it to us and to humanity, from which we receive it as a birthright. End of quote. From the time that we were small children, though, we've been taught to mind our manners and not to be like everybody else. You know, they tell you that, right? Not to be like everybody else. Mind your manners. As I continue on, we become slaves, as I said earlier, to what other people think or say about us. Taken too far, our conformity keeps us living in a subtle but very real state of fear. And fear paralyzes us. It stops us from getting ahead. It stops us from moving. You know, many people are going through fear today. Many people right now, they're afraid to leave home because they, they, they're, they're fearful. But fear it keeps us in a state of fear when we allow what other people think about us to stop us from getting ahead in life. We become afraid of acting differently than everyone else around us. Even when our heart tells us to do something one way, our social conscience tells us to do it another way. Our heart is saying go this way, but society say go the other way. Uh, if we go the other way, then we may draw too much attention to ourselves. And you know when we were growing up, they always tell you, don't try to draw too much attention to yourself. And all too often, our fear wins out. Fear always wins out for some reason. But to experience your highest good and your highest calling as you honor your calling, we need to break that mold. That's right. We need to break the mold. We must do things not as others do, but as our heart bids us to do. Not what other people say do, but what our heart bids us to do. And it's entirely possible to combine what is helpful with others with that which is enjoyable to ourselves. I'm here to encourage you to do what you could do now. Look at your life. Take a personal inventory of your life. Take the walk within. Find out who you are. Find out where you want to go. Right now, it's very challenging, the whole system. I see the presidential nominee, John McCain, just decided that he's going to um, put off the debate because of the financial crisis in the U.S., yeah, he's going to suspend his campaign and everything else. The financial crisis is right there with us, friends. But I'm here to tell you that you, have, you can be strong even in the difficulties. Some people give up, you know. They give up too soon. Oh, yeah, and they run. See, I don't listen to the negative chatter. That's right. I don't listen to the negative chatter. You have to listen to positive information, positive things. Because there are a lot of people with doom and gloom. The world is going to end. This is going to happen. We've been here before, you know. And the people who we come from in these islands were very strong. They made it with basically nothing. Give them some love. <laughs> hey, Brother Malachi, those people in Andros, those people in Ilufra, those people in Bimini, those people in Long Island, those people in Auckland and Crooked Island, they made it out of difficult situations for years. I'm here to tell you as I close this segment, I had a chance to go to California and I went by this church in Garden Grove, California, Dr. Robert Shuler's church. Beautiful edifice, glass, beautiful, beautiful. But Dr. Shuler said something very powerful years ago, and I had a chance to meet him on this visit. They gave me a tour of the facility, beautiful facility. And he said this. He said, tough times never last, but tough people do. And you're some of the toughest people I've ever seen. Give yourself some love. God bless you as you live your best life now. Thank you. We will be right back after these messages. At Fergo Car Rental, there's only one number to remember, $49.99. Choose from compact or mid-sized cars, and they're all just $49.99. And passenger vans that are $69.99. Also, with daily, weekly, and monthly rates available, you can enjoy even more savings. Visit us at any one of our convenient locations or enjoy our courtesy shuttle pickup and drop-off service to all hotels and airports. Virgo Car Rental. It's where you drive the best for less. If you would like to be a guest or a part of the studio audience during a live taping, call the Phoenix Institute at 393-3404 or email phoenixinstitute at gmail.com. Good evening. My guest this evening is Mr. Byron Wood 
Burnside, the Minister for Lands and Local Government. Welcome to Dare to Be Great, sir. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Minister, you've had a varied career. Um, you've started off as a executive with Junior Achievement. Uh, from there, you moved on to the uh, oil business at Texaco. Uh, from there, you moved on to become an attorney. And now you're a minister. Uh, uh, how did you plan your life? Well, for the most part, some of the things that happened in my life was planned, and some of it was not planned. Uh, for instance, I studied sociology and economics in school and wanted to be a sociologist but couldn't find a job for two years when I returned from school. I was, wow. I was cleaning yards wow. until the Ministry of Youth hired me and I became a youth officer with responsibility for junior achievement. But I always wanted to be a lawyer. And then I ended up working in Texaco uh, for some 11 years right. and uh, I never gave up on my dream to become a lawyer. Wow. And in my last years of working uh, with Texaco, I studied uh, law, uh, the, and I did the external degree program with the yes. University of London. And so after I had got my LLB, the question was, what's next? Yes. And so I decided to go on to the Eugene DePuch uh, Law School, where I did my certificate of legal education, and later I was called to the Bahamas Bar in 2003. Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, thank you. I'd just like to say publicly tonight that you gave me my first opportunity to speak professionally here in this country when you were the executive director of Junior Achievement. And you never paid me for that. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years ago. I'm still waiting for my commission. <laughs> As I say, the check is in the mail. Right? There you go. <laughs> but 20 years ago, you gave me that opportunity. Yes. And I'm so grateful for that. As a matter of fact, I'm celebrating 20 years in this business as a motivational speaker and a trainer. I like your story. It's, it's a story of challenge, overcoming challenges, yes. overcoming adversity, um, deciding on what you want to become, daring to be great. If you had one thing to do over in your life, if you could live your life over again, and one thing, what is that one thing would you do differently, Minister? Oh, that's a difficult question uh, because there are a lot of things that I would do differently. Uh, I would say, though, that uh, one thing I'm truly proud of and that is as being a father of two wonderful children. Yes. And uh, as far as doing something differently, I, I don't think that uh, I would really want to do anything differently because sometimes we find ourselves on a certain path, although we may not have planned it. Yeah. Uh, I believe in, in a God above, yeah. and I believe he's up there plotting things for you. Mm. And uh, although you, steps. yeah, uh, ordering your steps, and although you may... May, may not have a, an idea of, of where you're going. He knows exactly where he wants you to, to be. Yes. He knows your final destination. Wow. Powerful, powerful. So I, I, in a sense, I, I really wouldn't do anything differently. Powerful. Speaking of God, um, I knew you grew up in St. Barnabas Anglican Church. Uh, how important is faith to your overall success? I, I believe faith is very important. After all, it, it is the substance of things that you cannot see. And if you believe that you can accomplish some things and when you're in the thick of it, when, when, when there's nobody telling you that you can do these things, yes. that you can uh, be successful, that you can accomplish your dreams, it is about fate. Yes. It is that which you cannot see. But believing that it can happen and that all things are possible through Christ who strengthens you. Powerful stuff, powerful stuff. Give the man some love. Give the man some love. Speaking of accomplishing, speaking of your dreams, um, recently you were able to pull off a major upset in the political world. Uh, as a matter of fact, people are still talking about it today. It's, it's, it's an accomplishment almost like the New York Giants beating the New England Patriots <laughs> in last year's Super Bowl. <laughs> Nobody gave the Patriots, the, the, the Giants a chance, but they pulled off a big upset. Take us back to that moment when you realized what you had accomplished in Pinewood. Well, I'd, I'd like to take you first to how I got there. Yes. Um, I